hope is all many have left. Hope of finding the name of a loved one on the list of patients at this clinic. Overwhelmed, hospitals struggle to cope as the number of dead and injured mounts. People are trying to salvage what little they can despite the risks. People like shop owner Noor Hassan. I do feel scared coming back, he says, but I had to, to take what I can. I can't get the images of the huge waves out of my head. Indonesian President Joko Widodo visited the worst affected area on the west coast of Java. In future, the Meteorology, Climatology and Geophysics Agency will provide detection equipment that can give a warning to people, he says. In this case, unlike most other tsunamis, there was no earthquake, no trembling ground as warning. There are systems that can alert people to unusual waves in this kind of event, says geoscientist Dougal Jerram. The problem we have is that it won't give people that much of a warning, but in any situation, even a few tens of seconds warning might get people, some people to higher ground and might reduce the fatalities. In tsunami-prone Indonesia, warnings alone won't save lives, says this Canadian disaster relief specialist. There has to be a determined effort to move um, heavily populated areas, if possible, away from the waterfront, from the ocean, because that's where most of this uh, destruction happens. Indonesian officials say the danger has not yet passed. The Anak Krakatau is still erupting and could possibly trigger another tsunami. In the coming days, they're telling people to stay away from coastal areas. Chris O'Neill Yates, CBC News, Vancouver.